welcome back to my channel my name is Jenny if you don't know and today I'm gonna to be talking about my experience as an engineering design intern at a startup it's been about a month now since I've started interning at the company so I feel like I have some good experience to share with you guys about how it's like what I do my responsibilities what my day-to-day -day looks like so let's get started so my general responsibility is I transfer 2d drawings of parts into 3d models eventually the end goal is to make a whole assembly of 100 or something parts into one solid model that um, this company can present to a customer or a another business that they're investing with whatever in the future and that's my main goal the part i'm actually designing is a ct tube the cts that you see in the hospital that spin like this so my machine hooks onto that tube and it spins along with it i don't know the scientific technical details of what it actually does i just know like some electrons bounce around some radiation leaks out whatever there's like a huge danger radiation sign zone in the building and i there's signs everywhere so i am a little worried that i might get like radiation okay so i wanted to talk about my first week slash my first day at um my internship because i feel like that's the biggest time when you learn how to interact in a corporate environment and i feel like a lot of pressure is put in the first week so i really wanted to emphasize this in this video so the very first day i got up at i think i got up at 6 30 a.m because i was nervous i was gonna be late for work right and i got there at 7 4 the hr lady told me to come at 8 30 so i want to do it super super early she didn't come until 9 a.m but i met my um my direct boss he's um a part of the engineering r d department and he introduced himself um and he was super super cool he gave me this tour of the um, of our building and it was super super cool because they do all the manufacturing of the part they're building which is the ctu tube they have like all these separate places in this gigantic plant where they do all of that so he took me through the entire process this whole like two hour tour of this plant and that was really really cool if you work somewhere similar like where you're producing a product i would recommend you to get it. or they'll probably give it to you anyway but if they don't ask for a tour of the plant because it's nice seeing how things go from a small little object to like the the thing you sell the product you sell to to in my case hospitals stuff like that so i started the beginning of june i started june 6th if i remember correctly and i was super super nervous going into this internship because if you guys don't know this is my first internship ever in my entire life and i haven't been like perfect student so I knew that, I don't know, I felt like I didn't kind of, I didn't really belong there. That's what you call the imposter syndrome. I don't know, it was just, it was so stressful meeting everyone and feeling like, oh my God, what if I disappoint everyone? What if I, what if I don't live up to their expectations? Cause you know, I fluff up my resume, blah, 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 blah. I'm okay at interviewing. I didn't want to like disappoint anyone, you know? So I would end with really, I don't know, with a really nervous mindset, but Everyone was super, super nice. Everyone was always like, hi, my name is blank. If you ever need help or have any questions, you can come to me anytime. One thing I also want to reiterate is in addition to you being nervous, the people you're meeting are also nervous to meet you because they don't know if like you'll you'll fit into their company, if you're good enough to do their, their projects or whatever. So I guess they're nervous in a different way. And I guess it's a little more pressure, but just know that everyone's a little weird the first day because they're all like oh who's that hi blah, blah, blah. it'll be over soon and then everyone will be super super um normal to you the workplace i go to is about 30 to 40 minutes depending on traffic away from my house which means i have to get up at 7 30 ish a.m to get there in time at 9 a.m and that was really hard coming from a, like a summer vacation mindset where i woke up at noon every day and i got to like chill around the house and watch tv all day it was really hard going right into work and like having a working mindset and being focused the entire day that was one of my biggest struggles working really hard from like 9 a.m to 12 works really well for me and then afterwards i can like socialize or whatever with co-workers and like go maybe watch a video while i'm doing easier work um towards the afternoon also during my first day i got to get lunch with my like my direct boss 
and that was really nice because i got to know him he's a really cool guy his name's tony he's raising this four-year-old girl all by himself because the mom left or whatever and he's super super cool he's super down to earth and that's one thing i really recommend is to get lunch with your superior it doesn't have to be like your your boss boss even though you should because you should get to know him because you know like you can write your recommendation letters or whatever get lunch with somebody get to know an adult there that um you really get along with so if you have any questions you're never afraid to ask like hey can you help me with blah 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 because i feel like if you if you don't introduce yourself to anyone and you don't interact with anyone then it's really hard when you're stuck and you're afraid to reach out and ask questions you know so okay last thing i wanted to really emphasize is to ask any questions if you have some and i guess this carries over from college um but if you don't know what you're doing you have a chance of picking something up really bad and especially if you're working at like a company that makes expensive things making mistakes on those expensive expensive things will cost them millions of dollars so ask questions everyone's always willing to help you out and you're not like a bother to them if you're like oh how do i do this 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 i wanted to point out um especially for people who may not have solid experience working with companies or um if you didn't do well in school or whatever you're not expected to know anything about the job at all they'll they won't like teach you how to do it but you'll have time to learn by yourself like for me i haven't used solidworks at all which is the cat software we use i haven't used it all in school because in school all we focus on is um creo infusion tip if you can if you're working like in a similar job that uses a software you haven't used before try to get like a free trial of it play around with the settings in it test something out experiment a lot so you're semi familiar with the software you're using oh one thing that i didn't do for some reason was checking my emails in school i checked my emails like religiously i checked them maybe 20 times a day because i would we would get a lot of like reminders about tests or whatever important deadlines i never checked my emails at work until i was told by um by one guy hey i sent you that test form yesterday did you ever see it i needed you to sign it okay so now i want to move on to weeks two through four which is when i was getting used to the system i know what i'm doing with my 3d modeling i got it down now i'm starting to get involved with other projects i don't know if this happens in big companies because this is my first internship but for startups everyone's always really busy and everyone has many different things to do you wear many hats in this office so you're given different tasks that may not be related and it may be hard to juggle everything but i found that i actually enjoyed doing many things at once as compared to just focusing on 3d modeling another thing i picked up was um doing test procedures and releasing equipment so the company can prove to the like the higher regulatory companies that they can use this equipment and it's good for making their product or whatever but um basically i worked with the director of r d and he introduced me to how to use this different equipment and it was electrical based so at first i was like right because i don't like electrical engineering whatever things but it actually turned out to be really fun basically we just performed this test where you see if there's a current between two parts of the tube to see how good the insulation is because there's not supposed to be any current or whatever so i did that entire test i also had to write a report on it the test procedure basically and it's basically documenting how one uses the equipment i also wrote iqs and oqs Side note, during your entire internship, you're going to learn a lot of abbreviations like IQ, OQ, which is installation qualification and operation qualification. I think it's good to have like a piece of paper where you write down all the abbreviations and what they mean. For example, another thing I heard a lot of was ECO. And I was like, did they did they spell CEO wrong? What's going on? It means engineering change order. The number of abbreviations will blow your mind, but you'll quickly get used to it. But yeah, I wrote IQs and OQs, which is basically different test cases for the equipment. So you can prove they are used in the correct way, like they're calibrated in the right way. So that's what that is. And that was really fun because I like working more hands-on with equipment. I don't mind writing, so I enjoyed the word part. I know my um one of the other interns hated writing the thing and he just wanted to get back to 3d modeling so you may be like him and you want to focus on only one thing after you've 
done your first week and you're getting into your groove, you start to realize what you want out of the internship and how you want your role to be. So that's when you communicate to your superior and you're like, hey, I want to focus on this more. I want to focus on that more. In my case, I want to do more testing of equipment. I want to do more um, general tests for the tubes instead of doing so much 3D modeling work. And they'll give you more responsibilities like that, but also lessen like the thing you don't want to do as much as. So understand that you control what your day looks like and not like your boss. I guess that's something I didn't realize coming into the job. I thought they were going to tell me exactly what to do, like what meetings to go to, what projects to work on first, but really you do that yourself. You have to prioritize your own agenda. It's nice seeing how like a, a true engineer balances everything and it was so cool seeing like Tony running around like putting out fires as he calls it. It was just like a different change of setting I guess from school where everyone was solely focused on academic work. I guess the corporate world things get thrown at you that don't have an easy way to solve because it's I guess it's a mixture of like science and business and running a company. So there's many factors that play into solving a problem. And when these things add up, it, it gets really hectic. So, okay, one thing um, that I learned kind of the hard way is that sometimes you have to take on your coworkers responsibility. If they have like something going on, if they have to catch a flight or if they, I guess are like, they don't meet their deadline, so you have to take over in order to meet the company deadline. So for instance, I had to help um, this intern out with finishing the, the IQ and OQ and test procedure for his equipment release. It was very stressful because it was due at the end of the day and he didn't get very far. He had a flight at like 5 p.m. or whatever, so he had to leave at two, so I had to take over. I worked with the director on that. I was It was a really stressful time, but I actually had a lot of fun because he has like the personality of a professor where they where they know what they're doing, but they're so friendly to you that they feel like, like your older, I guess not older brother because he was, <laughs> he's a lot older, but like your, like he feels like your dad or something. And he's just like, I don't know, he's so chill with it, but it was, it was disappointing because it wasn't my work to do, but, in the real life, you can't just like abandon someone. You have to help them out or the entire ship sinks. Okay, so my final thoughts on my month of interning so far. Um, I just wanna say that even if you don't have, if you, if you have an amazing internship at Google or whatever, or if you're at like a small startup like me that is that doesn't have a lot of connections, or even if you don't have an internship at all, every opportunity is the same you just have like different connections that go with it but every opportunity is a learning experience and even if you feel like you're not getting a lot out of your internship i think it's on you to find something to learn out of it whether that be technical or social i feel like everyone can learn socially from being at a, at a shitty internship by just learning how to interact in a corporate office and living the cubicle life take every opportunity even if it's something you're not looking forward to because you'll always learn something eventually. And then going hand in hand with finding something you enjoy, regardless if you are in a position you love or don't love, I think you can find different areas in the industry you're working in that you're really interested in. Another takeaway that I got during my first month is that people know you're not gonna, especially if you're working in like a really small company, um, people know you're not going to want to work there full time, right? Because like all the students want to work at the top four companies or whatever. So they know that you're not interested in working there full time, but they're they're still going to help you regardless in getting to your career. Like all my coworkers always offer me advice and they give me a lot of knowledge about different industries and how their other jobs went. So just know that they don't care if you don't love their company. Like, and they, honestly, I don't even think many people love their own company, especially if you work at like a, a like a, not like a gigantic corporation. I don't think people love the company. They like what they do in it. So they'll give you a lot of advice on, on finding what you like to do and finding a job that fits you. Yeah, so um, that's my video for today. Again, just wanted to say that even if you don't have an internship or you're not enjoying your internship, that it's going to be okay. You're going to learn regardless, even if you're getting paid like $12 an hour or something, 
um, you're gonna learn something from it. And at the end of the day, that's what's most important because then you get to further your career. It'll be okay in the end. Just, it's only like two months of your summer and then it'll all be worth it in the end because after you do your first internship, the rest will come super, super easily. At least that's what I heard. I hope that's true. But um, yeah, that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and I hope you have a nice day. Bye.